Hello you guys, today I'm going to be telling you the sort of ideas that you want to be working with in nighttime photography. Nighttime photography for a beginner can look very um, uninteresting or like hard, but as soon as you get the basics down you can pretty much, um, you know, actually do some very good shots with it. Now, um, Many people will shoot differently from me. I use a mirrorless uh, Canon EOS M50. Obviously, I went mirrorless this time um, because of the actual nighttime photography abilities um, of that extremely high, sh uh, high, extremely high ISO of twenty-five thousand. Now, of course, I'm never going to use twenty-five thousand ISO. Uh, because of the amount of grain that you would get on the image would be a little bit too much. Now, the first idea is ISO, definitely. I've just mentioned it. You want to have a very high... You want to have a mid to high ISO. Even in normal portrait photography, a low to mid ISO isn't actually that bad. Most people will think, oh no, but it grains up the image. But if you have good post-processing, you can take away that grain very easily. Denoising tools and s mostly just filters, not going to lie. Filters do very well. And JPEG of noise compression is obviously very good at reducing that noise of um, ISO. Now, normally I would look for the range at night time between 6,000 and 10,000 unless I'm going to be um, you know uh, long shot speed light trails obviously you can use it more than for light trails but in my opinion it looks a little bit weird especially if someone walks into the frame it doesn't look very good if it's just a blurry mess like even like you know half second Three quarter second shots of like high shutters, like like long shutter speeds. Uh, nah, it's just a bad idea. Shutter speed should be, you should really have two modes. One mode for, you you should get the basic down for the first mode, which is long shutter speed, uh, light trails, uh, big landscape areas, you know, cityscapes. That definitely is great because. The ISO for night and the sky, especially overseas, it's really bad because the grain ISO, because it's light sensitivity, light sensitivity. If it's a flat color like you know black, dark blue, it will completely overgrain that image. Now, that's when mode two comes in, which is your basic. Uh, nighttime shot walking down the streets with your camera and finding nice compositions now this one should be looking around about you don't want to go anything above 1 1 25th obviously if your camera has uh, active image stabilization I would say with a steady hand 1 75th of a second would be all right but don't go, I wouldn't say for safety, don't go below 1 1 25th. Uh, even with image stabilization, I have still haven't managed to get a good, completely clean image from 1 50th. Uh, aperture obviously depends on your shot. Obviously, at nighttime, you want an extremely wide aperture f2, preferably on your uh, out of very wide lens, you know, like the Canon f2 stim lens. Um, and that's mm, that's basically the best part though because uh, you should really be looking at fixed lenses rather than adjustable lenses especially for a night time you want to be looking at autofocus manual focus because even for like normal street photography manual focus kind of sucks because you can see something and it'll be gone the next second so autofocus is definitely a good a good thing to get used to. Uh, just put putting it on, keeping it on for most of the time. That's what I do. 
like my whole focus is gone like from contrast to now actual full frame select um so it selects different tonal values and selects different um areas based on movement and motion uh, obviously mine has servo autofocus which is for moving targets that is probably like autofocus is no longer the tool where it goes oh, i use autofocus that's newbie no not anymore good camera will have good autofocus now especially on the new sony's um not even new ones as's as2's as1's those no a7s ones and s2's those have insanely good autofocus and those are also mirrorless if you're shooting a dslr you will find it a little bit more difficult because not only do you have a like lower iso to deal with usually they only go up to about a thousand dollar mid-range camera but also optical image on your um eye finder that sucks so much i hate it obviously for mirrorless cameras there is no mirror so it can't reflect an image into the actual eye finder instead it takes a direct image of the cmos sensor and relays it back to the actual screen or the eye finder it is not gonna lie even be, even if it's like an oled which over contrasts everything which is what mine does it blows out the colors quite a bit you still get a better representation than an optical viewfinder at night optical viewfinder at night absolutely sucks because you you look through the eye finder and you will see like oh yeah this is really bright and then you'll go to your your photo later and it'll be like like nothing it'll be black with a little bit of like white edges on it because you didn't adjust correctly all you saw was the raw direct image from the actual uh mirror in your camera now picking your times it's definitely one of the best things you could do don't pick your times if you want to if you're a beginner don't pick times which are like you know where people go to the pub especially up here in newcastle uh don't 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 go with times then you will not only will you have a higher chance of you know being um like it bumped into like oh you mate what are you doing man can't take photos out here but um also the risk of your gear being stolen the risk of um getting a bad shot because of a random stranger walking into the middle of your camera it's a lot higher now obviously if you're looking for a bit of bustling go between those times don't feel afraid but I would definitely remain wary of other people, especially stupid people who get drunk. Like not being like st- people or people who get drunk are stupid, but some people are very extremely stupid when they're drunk, like driving. Um, but choose your times wisely. Um, obviously with the pandemic on, you can't really choose your times wisely because. Basically, all city centres are deserted now. I uh, I did a photo shoot a couple of weeks ago, and there was like all of the restaurants, everything was just empty. Even Gray's Monument, um, in the centre of Newcastle near Northumberland Street, that thing was empty. No one was like I saw like three people, and so yeah yeah, I. I recommend getting out now before the pandemic finishes because after that you're going to get a lot more drunk people. Yep. Especially after 4th of July. Yeah, that sucks. Now, the next step is obviously choosing your gear. Tripod. Always, always bring a tripod. You never know when you're going to find a nice spot, a nice quiet spot for a long shot speed moment. Don't have it out all the time. It sucks carrying a tripod. Um, unless obviously you bring a friend along. I definitely recommend bringing someone along. Uh, obviously if you get into like, trouble with police. Which most people do now. Obviously they can't really do it as often now. Because of the Terror- Terrorism Act. 
section 43 and section 40 were repealed for photography so they can't really stop you anymore they can't stop you anyway for public public photography but they still stop you anyway um so i recommend going out in pairs stop people from getting in your way stop people from being annoying just general stupid people um but definitely bring your tripod monopod even the monopod monopod could i i don't really see the point of a monopod but for some styles of uh city street uh, looking down at an area monopod would definitely be useful they're about you can get them for about 15 pound now which is great you know you get a nice stainless steel aluminium one for about 15 pounds and also a filter do not forget your either your uv filter uv filter f if you're doing very lit up areas uh definitely useful uh for me i have a polarizer filter obviously for increasing that color increasing that depth but d d just don't don't run out with no filter because you'll end up yes you'll end up with very nice flat photos but for nighttime photography you want very depth fulfilling photos which aren't very you know <laughs> flat <laughs> obviously you can do it later in post processing but trying to do that kind of sucks now my last sort of idea would definitely be juicy style all the, the styles of nighttime photography have basically been fulfilled by now if you want to try and go out with your own style yes but that is like s slightly evading the concept of nighttime photography nighttime photography is expressing how your area looks at nighttime now obviously some different photographers will have some sort of different ideas for this but not really like you should be looking at what kind of photos that express your area express your personality express your ideas uh, can you take it night obviously you choose i would likely choose a sort of idea like oh yeah i'm going to take some light trail tonight oh yeah i'm going to take some city street portraits landscapes tonight oh yeah i'm going to be doing a uh, model in the city streets tonight oh yeah i'm going to do bokeh tonight i would choose a technique and stick with that technique obviously you can throw in a couple more like landscape photos portrait photos of uh, things but try and stick with that technique of otherwise you'll be going all over the place you'll be uh grabbing your tripod trying to get that sh long shutter speed of a busy car you'll try take it off try switching swapping your settings around trying to get your entire ISO down uh, and trying to get your shutter speed down trying to get your ISO up trying to get your ISO down trying to get your aperture down trying to get aperture up it's a mess stick with one tool and one technique for that time you can always go out later obviously if you're visiting a place just wait another time to visit the place choose a style choose a technique obviously you can mess around with that technique if you're in a place that you don't really know I would just do standard nighttime photography. You know, don't do like these long shutter speed moments unless, of course, you're in America, like in New York. God, I wish, like, I kind of wish I don't because of coronavirus, but I kind of wish I do because, you know, Central Park and everything is gorgeous. So, yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.